Hi friends! Today we are going to read another version of a Cinderella story, which I'm really excited about. And this version is called The Korean Cinderella. This book is written by Shirley Kumo and illustrated by Ruth Heller. And just like with all our other Cinderella stories, we're going to be thinking about how this story is similar to and different from the other Cinderella stories that we've read so far. So let's start The Korean Cinderella. Long ago in Korea, when magical creatures was, were as common as cabbages, there lived an old gentleman and his wife. For years, they longed for a child to share their tile-roofed cottage. At last, a daughter was born. Good fortune, the old man exclaimed. I'll plant a pear tree in the courtyard to celebrate this day. And Pear Blossom will be our daughter's name, the old woman added. Both the tree and the child grew lovelier with each passing season. In spring, white flowers frosted the tree, and Pear Blossom wore a white ribbon in her long, black braid. In summer, when the tree bent right from being free, Pear Blossom's mother wove a band of rosy gold into her hair. In the autumn, when the leaves from the tree blew about the courtyard like scraps of sunshine, her mother dressed Pear Blossom in a yellow gown. But one winter day, when the branches of the pear tree were still bare of sticks, the old woman died. I go, wailed the old man. Who will tend Pear Blossom now? He put on his tall horsehair hat, horsehair hat, hair hat, hair hat, and a little widow with a daughter. The girl, named Peony, was just the age of Pear Blossom. Three and one, promised the matchmaker. A wife for you, and a mother, and a sister for Pear Blossom. So the old gentleman took the widow for his wife. Although Pear Blossom called the woman Omoni, or mother, she was far from motherly, and Peony was far worse than having no sister at all. Omoni found fault as soon as she stepped into the kitchen. Too cold, she grumbled. The fire's gone off. Fetch wood, Pear Blossom, be quick. Pear Blossom gathered sticks and fed the stove until the wooden kettle danced from steam. Too hot, her stepmother scolded them. The noodles are scorching. Get water, Pear Blossom. Be quick. Both Amoni and Peony were jealous of Pear Blossom, and the harder she worked, the happier they were. Each day, Pear Blossom was up before high, the sun. She cooked and cleaned until midnight, with only the crickets for company. Each year was worse than the one before, for her father grew too feeble to pay attention to Pear Blossom's troubles. Amoni dressed Pear Blossom in rags and tied her shiny braid with a tight rope. And now she and Peony addressed her only as Little Pig or Pigling. Pigling has a pigtail, jeered Peony, but nothing could hide Pear Blossom's beauty. At night, Amoni lay sleepless, searching for an excuse to get rid of her stepdaughter. One morning, she told Pear Blossom, the water jar by the door needs filling. It leaks, Amoni, Pear Blossom replied, for it has a hole the size of an onion. Stubborn little pigs get tied up and taken to market, warned her stepmother. Fill that jar. Then Amoni and Peony marched through the courtyard gate, locking it behind them. Pear Blossom leaned against the tall jar. Will none of this, or will none in this world help me? She asked. Jug, jug, jug full, rumbled a hoarse voice. A togabi, Pear Blossom gasped, a goblin. What if the togabi goblin were hiding in the jar? Fearfully, she stood and tiptoed and peered inside. A gigantic frog with bulging eyes stared back. Jugful, it croaked again, and squeezed itself like a stopper into the hole in the jar. As you wish, agreed Pear Blossom, for frog or goblin, it was the best to do its bidding. She hurried to the well and drew a jug full of water. When she poured it into the jar, not a drop leaked out. When Amoni and Peony returned, they found Pear Blossom resting beside the jar. So, Amoni shrilled, off to the market, little pig. But Amoni, the jar is full, Pear Blossom protested. A frog helped you. Trickery, snapped the stepmother. But she muttered to Peony, a magic frog. Inside, look inside that jar. Peony hung over the rim, but saw only her own smiling face, smiling face, face, face. 
squatters soaked Peony from head to toe. Piglins to blame, she howled. Someday little pig will get what she deserves, Ammonia declared. She made Pear Blossom crawl through the puddles, licking up the water. The next morning, Ammonia scattered a huge sack of rice around the courtyard. Haul this rice, little pig, she ordered. Polish every grain, or else. She took the empty bag, you'll be put in the sack, and sent to China. Then Ammonia and Peony left for the village. Rice covered the ground like sand beside the sea. Pear Blossom threw her arms around the pear tree and asked, Will none in this world help me? Wings whirred overhead, and a flock of sparrows flew out of the tree. Cheer, 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 the sparrows called to Pear Blossom. They pecked at the rice, separating husk from kernel. In a matter of minutes, the sparrows had polished the rice and piled it in a corner. When Ammonia came back, she found Pear Blossom nodding beneath the rice. Off to China, her stepmother began, and then caught sight of the mound of rice. How can this be, she demanded. Pear Blossom rubbed her eyes. Sparrows flew out of the tree and polished the rice. Birds don't hull rice, scoffed Ammonia. They eat it. A peony, she whispered. It's magic that's flying about. Catch some. She pushed peony beneath the pear tree. At once, the cloud of sparrows swooped down. Cheat, 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 they chattered at peony. They pecked at her, tearing her jacket. They perched on her head, pulling at her hair. Piglins to blame, Peony bawled. Someday, little pig will get what she deserves, Ammonia threatened. She did not give Pear Blossom anything to eat, not that day or the next. Not so much as a kernel of rice. All right, we'll end here for today. This is a pretty long one, so we might even split it into three days. But this story is a little different, right? There are some things that are the same as other Cinderella stories, but I'm noticing a lot of differences too. So I want you to think about that as you go into your day and we'll keep reading tomorrow. All right, have a great day.